Also, I guess this week turned out a little different than uh, you planned at the beginning of it. Uh, what is this like for a UFC debut, media day, international fight week? I mean, this is pretty wild. Oh, man, it's crazy. I'm, I, I think I'm in a dream right now. <laughs> but at the same time, um, this is what I work for, and this is why I put in all the hard work. So at the same time, I'm excited, too. That's but it's awesome. like, oh, man, it's like a dream. Absolutely. How, how did it all come together? How did, what was the sequence of events that, uh, that, that came together for you? Well, honestly, I was supposed to really be on a contender series um, in August. And then um, a couple hours ago, I got a call saying that I have an opportunity to be on the main car finding Bo Nichols. So I'm like, all right, let's go. I mean, you know, it couldn't, couldn't get no better than that. I mean, I don't have to wait, you know what I'm saying, straight in, you know, into a, a debut fight versus one of, the, one of the better guys, I guess, on the roster. So it's exciting. I love it. Like you said, everybody's trying to get here, right? When you get the opportunity, you're not going to turn it down. But it is against Bo Nickel, right, this mythical figure of Bo Nickel. I mean, did you have any conversation about that? Like, is this the right opportunity, or could we just hang around and wait for Contender Series? Oh, I didn't think twice about it. I didn't think twice about it. I was just like, let's go. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to – you know, get in, find somebody tough anyway. So why not do it now? You know, you had a little bit of a layoff prior to this time, right? So what's been going on? Because it's uh, you know this was a big opportunity for you, but uh -huh. there's been some time in between fights. I wouldn't say it's a layoff because I was kind of I was training still, but I just wasn't I wasn't signed at the time. You know, I, ever since I got signed, that's where we got the ball moving. So ever since I got signed, we got the ball moving. But I wouldn't consider it as a layoff. I would say more like. Preparation, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, training and then honing the skills, you know, as I go. Last thing for me, coming into this, as you said, I mean, you're here. It's, it's, it's the dream, right? But how do you look at this? Is this a no-lose situation? Like, if it doesn't go your way, ah, we just did what we could do? Or do you feel like, no, I got to no. go in there and do something? No, I'm coming in to put on a show. This win, the, winning this fight is mandatory for me. There's no uh, slack or nothing like that. This, this is not just a fight just because it's on short notice. I'm coming to fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming to put on a show. I'm coming to utilize my opportunity and maximize it to the fullest. <clears throat> Over here. Um, we've heard from, like, in the past, fighters that have taken these short notice fights that sometimes it's a blessing in disguise for them because they don't have to, it, they don't dwell on it for, like, months and weeks at a time, especially ahead of their UFC debut. I'm curious what camp you fall in. Like, would you have preferred, like, I'm sure you would have preferred a full camp, but in terms of your UFC debut on International Fight Week on a main card pay-per-view, is it a blessing in disguise that you don't have to just dwell on this for weeks? Uh, actually, yes. It's a blessing in disguise because when, when I heard I was on a contender, it was like way out, you know what I'm saying? And it's still, I'm still waiting. Um, so it couldn't get any better than this, you know what I'm saying? Two days notice. I mean, obviously I got to do what I got to do to, you know, be ready. But two days notice is nothing to me because I'm used to like pretty much my whole amateur career is built off – Short notice fight and my last my last fight that I took in Orlando it was a short notice fight I took that day, that fight the day of the weigh in so short notice fight don't really shake me you know what I'm saying because in the day it's an opponent and we're gonna fight kind of going off of that the UFC tends to like fighters that take these quick turnaround these short notice fights you're gonna be one of those guys or are you gonna be yeah I'm gonna be that guy I'm gonna be that guy to step in every time every time they need me. I'm curious, how much did you watch of Bo Nichols and his fight career and stuff? Um, I saw him on a contender series. I know he was, um, well, he wasn't on my radar until a couple of days ago. But I know he's a good wrestler, Division I, um, I guess state champion, uh, undefeated in MMA, so am I. And he's just like another fighter like me. So um, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to tussle with this guy. Last one for me. Um, on this same card, it's Robbie Lawler's last fight ever so I'm curious like you obviously a fight fan do you have a favorite memory of Robbie's career a favorite fight of his um when I just started watching MMA um Robbie Lawler he fought um Nick Diaz oh that was a good fight that was, that was a good there. fight um he fought um uh, it was a bloody one he fought I think Roy McDonald yeah that was a bloody one so and then he won the welterweight championship so I know who Rob Robbie Lawler is yeah, so um, for him to go out like this and for me to be on a platform like this with him retiring, I mean, couldn't get me no better than that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream come true. Val, in the back over here. Question for you. To your right. 
talking about the magnitude of this fight. It's your UFC debut. It's on inter it's in International Fight Week. You're opening for the pay per view. All these things amount and start to stack up against one another. In your mind and in your preparation through the journey from where you started to where you are now, what do you think has built you and got you ready and poised for this moment? For my team, my coaches. Um, from day one, uh, my coach Julian always tell me, you know, so when you get there, you know, just be patient. You know, when you get there, it's it's like a, it's gonna be like a, it's gonna be everything gonna be going fast. So you just gotta take it in and then stay calm and then take it as you go, enjoy the moment. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's it's a lot, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just taking it for what it is and enjoy the moment and because this is my moment, you know what I'm saying. I earned it, so I'm enjoying it and living to the fullest. But damn, I can't wait to Saturday night. <laughs> Speaking of that moment, elaborate a little bit more on the story of where you were when you got the call for the move up from the Contender Series and everything and, and everything on that. Honestly, um, I just got off a long day at work. Um, I came home, cooked my dinner, sat down, popped the Corona. I'm about to sit down. Next thing you know, um, um, Lance is calling me. He's like, hey, where you wait at? I'm like, uh, oh, by 206, 211. He's like, well, <laughs> then he goes, he goes, um, do you want to, uh, do you have opportunity for you? Do you want to take it? It's against Bo Nickel. So I say, yeah, I'll take it. And he goes, confirm with your coach first. And then he was with it. So I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's run it. Next thing you know, a couple hours later, I was out here dropping away and, you know, because Everything, like I said, I haven't took a layoff. I've been training, you know. I've been training consistently in camps. Not like as a fight camp, but like training, like keeping the body in shape, you know, learning new things, taking classes and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm ready, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. Yeah, over. I ain't more ready. And talking a little bit about you being ready, I want you to talk about a little bit about your family. Like what impact have they made along this journey and now being in this moment in the spotlight mm -hmm. and everything happening so fast? Talk about their impact on you. Uh, basically, my pretty much back in the days, my dad was a, um, a boxer. So, but he never really like made it like on the big scene. We used to like in the backyard, it's like a, a dirt, a dirt, a dirt spot, you know, ropes around it. And then, you know what I'm saying? we. I'm watching them going at it, you know what I'm saying? I remember one time, I never seen my dad took an ass whooping before, but I seen him took an ass whooping that day. He was just putting water in his head. So I was like, damn, this is crazy. This man is crazy. So I, I really picked up on that as I go. I got the, I definitely got the drive from him and the aggression and, and the, the gladiator mentality. So that's why, you know, I'm. Val over here. Um, you mentioned uh, work. What do you do for work outside of fighting? Um, I used to um, work in a restaurant, but I quit that and opened my own landscaping company. So that's what I'm doing right now full time. So I can actually make my schedule to actually train and, you know, put more time to my career. So that's what I do in the daytime. I go training and when I get out of training, I go do landscaping and I come home and do it every day, do it again. You know? And with the getting called up to the UFC, does that change things for you in terms of work? Or are you going to keep still keep doing that? Oh, no, that doesn't change anything for me. I have a crew back home taking, taking care of everything. Um, being on this platform doesn't change anything. Um, I still want to grow my business and, you know, hire people in and, you know, feed families and change life still. Ain't nothing changed. You know, it just, I'm just where I wanted to be. That's all. And I saw a lot of fighters on social media uh, kind of giving you a shout out, like supporting you. I saw Ode Osborne, Chris Curtis. What does that mean to you to have so many other fighters kind of rooting for you this weekend? I mean, those guys are like family, you know what I'm saying? I have, I, have, I have a relationship with those family. I train with those guys, been in the same spot with those guys. So we have a relationship, and we have a, I feel like we have a good connection, and those guys are really supportive. Ever since I came to Vegas, they've been really supportive, and that's really a big because, you know, coming out here, you know what I'm saying, not from, you know, this is not my hometown, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like out here. Pretty much I'm in the big old ocean right now, you know what I'm saying? So that's really good to get those support from those guys. It means a lot. And just last one for me, I know you kind of talked a little bit about before, but you kind of feel like you're playing a bit with house money here. You get the call up, a lot of people counting you out. Bo's supposed to be this, you know, phenom, and, and here you are looking to spoil the party. Talk a bit about that and just sort of the mentality oh, going I'm in. definitely going to be the bad apple Saturday night. I'm definitely going to be that guy. Um, I'm known for that, pretty much. I'm known for ruining this guy's careers. Not not career, but records and stuff. I'm known for that. I'm, I'm known for the upset, and I love being the underdog because I thrive off of that, you know what I'm saying? I like... 
after the fight, I want people to come up to me, hey, you, you, good job, you know what I'm saying? You did a good job, you know, we was cotton you out, you, you came through, you know what I'm saying? You, you did your thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming out there to show them that I'm a dog. <laughs> they will see. Uh, Val, over here to your left, in the back. Uh, on that same note, um, mm -hmm. you know, just talking, I mean, plus 1,200 is about, it's about as big of an underdog as it gets in the UFC, man. Like, <laughs> you know, how, how you feeling? Your first time up, uh, stepping up, have the chance to play as big of a spoiler as it gets. I mean, 12, plus, 12, plus 1,200 don't mean nothing. That's what they predict. The UFC fight is not script. It's about to be live, so we'll see. <laughs> Perfect. And then last question for you. In the gambling capital of the world, I got to ask you, you got a favorite roulette number or color? Blue. <laughs> Over here? Uh, back here? Uh, how's it feel that, um, and, and by the way, uh, because you mentioned that you took short notice fights throughout your career, is it because you've been such in such a prominent division in the UFC with such a rich history with like the Anderson Silvas and the Chris Weidmans? Is that the reason why? Because you always have that talent in the back of your head that you're so comfortable saying, hey, yeah, my first fight, I'll take a Bo Nickel fight. Um, I would say not really, but really, but um, I'm the type of guy like, when, once I start something, I'm consistent with it. You know what I'm saying? So. Being an MMA fighter, my whole six years of fighting, I've always been ready. You know, I've always been ready. Like you call me, like I'm ready. You know, what I'm saying my second amateur fight, I took a a fight within like a same thing, made weight, cut 20 pounds. You know, made weight and won that fight. You know, what I'm saying so. It's not about it's all about the mindset. It's all about what you want. You know, what I'm saying it's all about how, how hungry you are. It's all about how bad you want it. You know, what I'm saying. And it all comes down to, you know, excuses. I don't make excuses for myself. If I got to do it, I got to just do it, you know, and get it over with. So I feel like that's what makes me different. In your first fight, you could potentially shock the world and derailed the public hype train and also have the most popular landscaping company in the world. I mean, you know, I'm going to win. I'm going to shock the world. Shock the world. Yes, sir. I'm going to look him in his eyes after that. I'm going to say, hey, thanks for the opportunity. But I'm the better man today. That's you know what I'm saying. I want it more than you.